Hello and welcome to VirtualCon.Live. I'm your host, Virtual Connor. Today's webinar is a deep dive into the most frequently asked fast and related questions for the manufacturing and electronics industry. Our guest speakers today are Ann Siletz and John Butler with Olander. Hi, welcome everyone. It's so good to have you join us today. Uh, I'm Ann Siletz, Business Development Manager at Olander. And co-speaking with me today is John Butler, our Director of Business Development and Resident Certified Fastener Specialist at Olander. We are your trusted stocking distributor of fasteners and tools. Say hi to the group, John. Thank you, Ann. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for joining us in this presentation. Well, today we are taking a deep dive into the most frequently asked questions. So these are questions we have heard time and time again um, from customers related to the fasteners for the manufacturing and electronics industry. And at Olander, we take pride in helping people around the world build and invent, innovate by solving their fastener needs with our uh, substantial inventory, substantial uh, over $8 million worth of inventory and our unmatched test technical expertise and exceptional customer care. And in the picture, you see uh, some of the team members. There's John in the forefront, Carl in the center front, Jeff in the back, and myself on the left. Um, we have one other outside sales rep, Doug Miracle, servicing the Washington State area. And Olander, we have been um, serving events, technology, and mission critical projects in North America and globally for over 50 years. And collectively, this team of five has over 100 years of collective technical experience in fastener industry supporting manufacturers. Um, and we're here to help you uh, in providing design solutions so you can make the best choice for your application. And so the first question for today that we're going to be answering is what type of fastener is best for a specific application? And for the uh, areas to consider when choosing a fastener are what material um, would be best for the application? Do you need any kind of platings or coatings? Is a locking feature needed? Is there going to be some sort of vibration there? And what head and drive style would be best for you? And John's going to take it from here. Thank you, Ann. Appreciate it. So the strength of your uh, product, the fasteners that you're putting it into, this is one of the uh, first questions that you have about materials. So conductivity of the fasteners itself, will it disturb or prohibit anything inside your application? The strength of the fastener itself, is it going to be strong enough to hold together the product that you have? Uh, the weight, um, you look at aircraft, you know you're going to need lightweight fasteners for that. Any moisture or chemicals that can affect the fastener material or the plating. Uh, one of the featured items today is Nitronic 60. Uh, this item is a magnesium and silicon based material that stops any galling uh, fasteners when you're putting them together. Um, also salt spray ratings. Uh, this is considered to be one of the most critical things because um, Corrosion of the fastener will um, ruin the joint that you have together. So uh, these are some of the things that to consider when putting together a fastener and uh, bolted joint. Thank you, John. And some of the materials um, that we'll be talking about and for the most common fastener materials are steel. Steel is one of them and by far is the most common material used for manufacturing screws because steel is cheap, it's inexpensive. And the only drawback to steel is that it's weaker some of the, um, than some of the other options. And another uh, material we'll talk about is stainless steel. Most importantly, it is corrosion resistant. It has an excellent life cycle, is environmentally friendly, and is 100% recyclable. 
It's also resistant to high heat as well as extremely cold temperature, making stainless steel a material of choice for almost any application. Uh, another material is aluminum. Aluminum isn't as durable as other materials, but it does have one big thing going for it. It's weight. Aluminum is just about the lightest weight fastener you can find. And then titanium. Titanium is for um, if you are looking for a high strength and lightweight material, you know, your titanium may be your go-to. You'll often pay a premium for this material but the extra cost pays off big time when you need a fastener that's robust and doesn't weigh much. And John? Thank you, Anne. Thank you. So here we have a um, head marking chart. Uh, fasteners are required to have head markings for higher strength materials. You will also have you manufacture head markings as well to make sure we know who is making the part. All fasteners from Olander will be traceable. We have um, lot traceability, the dates, the manufacturer, and uh, any heat treat information uh, with full certs. So what you're seeing here are different radial lines that represent different strengths of fasteners. So some of the stainless steel grades that are most popular. Um, the first one is Everybody knows it as 18.8. So what does 18.8 stand for? It's 18% chromium and 8% nickel. These are the major alloys inside the material itself. 18.8 is actually a 304 material, or if you're using metric, it would be A2. So this is the least expensive of the uh, stainless steel grades. And then we jump over to the 316 stainless or A4 in metric. The uh, good part about uh, 316 stainless is the anti-rusting. There will be um, less rusting for this compared to a 304 material. It's also um, withstands chemicals and uh, will not uh, degrade your application. Some of the higher strengths in uh, stainless steel are 410 and 420. These are commonly found in self-drilling screws because it can be hardened and they will be much stronger. So the 420 is uh, also has a higher carbon content than the 410 stainless steel. So a lot of these different materials are available from Olander in stock. Aluminum is the second material we'll talk about. That is the different grades of aluminum and why we would use those. Uh, picture here are repetitive rivets from the Stanley engineered speed fastening line. Uh, aluminum grades, different grades uh, for different applications. And we'll go through some of those now. So first you have the uh, 1000 series uh, in aluminum. And this is a very soft material. It's very workable. You can have many different shapes in uh, 1100 F material for rivets for different uh, components uh, because it does form very well. Next, we have the 2000 series. Um, this is used for um, a higher strength fastener. So uh, uses it's a aircraft alloy and 21, uh, 2024, uh, also in a T, T4 uh, material is uh, uh, highly corrosion resistant and great for fasteners. Pictured here are two of the structural rivets that are made from Stanley Engineered Fastening as well. Um, this is a monobolt. It's a very high strength, high structural rivet. Um, the other material that we're talking about, aluminum, is the 6000 series. So 6061. Again, many rivets are made from this type of material. Um, it is very heat treatable and it can be for, uh, formed in a T4 temper, um, which is heat treated, uh, not by artificially aged, and you can reach T6 properties by artificial aging. So Anne mentioned before about titanium. This is a very lightweight material. Uh, 
used in a lot of the aircrafts. And what you're seeing here is pictures of the drilled head, which is a locking device. So what they do in aircrafts is they uh, push a wire through the holes in the head and they tie the two bolts together. And this stops from the, any anti-rotation of the fastener to make sure that's staying locked in place. Uh, titanium is great for military applications, uh, for the uh, submarine, uh, submarine masses, and exteriors, landing gear, and NASA as well. Go we'll the other way. What would a presentation if be if there wasn't at least one little glitch? I know. <laughs> So the common uh, material Thanks, mistakes, I can, thank you, Ann. Uh, using the incorrect drop, uh, diameter of the fastener or the quantity of the different fasteners. So if you have an application such as a pressure plate, you wanna make sure that the diameter and the number of fasteners will provide enough holding power in that bolted joint in order to keep the application together. We can help you with that. We can provide you with the engineering data. Working with a fastener distributor, you have a lot of different choices because we have many manufacturers that we work with and we can provide you with the best product for your application. The second mistake is using the incorrect strength fastener. So there's many different grades of steel and stainless steel as we mentioned. And if you don't have the correct strength for that fastener or heat treated or stress relieved, you're going to have issues with that product. Many people know about the different issues with hydrogen and brittlement. So making sure that we bake the parts gives that uh, material a higher strength without it being too brittle. Tensile strength and vibration, uh, very important. So platings and coatings is one of the next things we're going to talk about and why you would choose a different plating uh, is for anti-corrosion. You have harsh environments out there and you want to protect the product. But also um, many different fasteners, uh, um, coatings, add lubricity that you need for your products to make sure that when you are applying um, torque to a fastener, that that lubricity inside the um, coating itself will not inhibit the bolt of joint and cause the fastener to yield. And once the fastener yields, you're going to have a broken bolt. Many people are familiar with the green coating of grounding screws for all the electronics industries. So that's a very common part. And there's different colors that are available. And each one of the different coatings can carry different soft spray ratings, uh, but also for harsh environments. In the European Union, you do not want any um, harsh chemicals, and that's why they have the Rojas compliant material. Um, we provide you with Rojas compliant uh, platings for all of our fasteners. So what are the most common mistakes in plating? And that is the use of non-compliant platings, as I just mentioned, or the plating thickness. So if you have a product that could be shipped over to Europe, you want to make sure that you have Rojas compliant products. Uh, but also you want to make sure that the plating thickness that are, you are um, requesting is able to meet the tolerances within your the thread that you are going to be putting the bolt into. Um, many plating such as galvanized coating can uh, really accumulate uh, to make sure that, that it has great coating, but it's not going to be able to thread into a, a regular tapped hole. So that's a very important decision to make. And if you contact Olander, we can help you with that. Um, next thing is the torque consideration. Um, the lubricity of the plating itself can assist or hinder the bolted joint itself. And we can help you with that. And we conduct torque tests on fasteners to make sure that the fasteners that we sell are compliant to what you need. So if you have any special requests, we need to make sure that we help you with your design and engineering of those. Um, here we have a, a corrosion, a galvanic corrosion um, chart. 
This is a reduced chart, just so you're able to view it. Um, if you contact us, we can send you out a chart with about 30, 35 different materials. So what we're doing here is we're providing you with a, a, a nice, easy chart so that if you have similar materials, you know there won't be any galvanic corrosion. So what is galvanic corrosion? When you have dissimilar metals, it will actually eat away at those materials, causing corrosion, causing your bolted joint not to be as strong. So I see here we have zinc material. And if I'm putting that with a galvanized steel, I have very low galvanic corrosion. Whereas if I put it with stainless steel, uh, a zinc part with a, a stainless steel parent material, I'm going to have high galvanic corrosion, meaning it is going to react um, and corrode away uh, the different products itself. Well, all bolted joints will hold together if you have a, the proper torque and stretching of the fastener of the bolt itself. That's how you keep a bolted joint together. This is all great until you have any vibration. So vibration, one of the ways that we counteract that mechanically is a mechanical fastener um, known as Nord Lock Washer. Nord Lock Washers prevent any loosening of bolted joints during high vibration. So that's something to be considered. We're a Nord Lock distributor. We're very happy to provide you with a quote or samples and engineering support for that. Critical applications, aerospace, uh, medical device, you don't need fasteners coming loose. And, and that's why there are locking devices. Um, one of the uh, pictures here, you're seeing uh, different pellets, patches, and microspheres from one of our other manufacturers, which is ND Industries. And the way a pellet or a nylon patch work is it's actually just forcing the fastener against the opposite side of the threads. And this stops that. It, it interferes with the bolt coming loose. But they also have different chemicals or um, pre-applied materials that you uh, are very clean and you don't have to worry about a mess that are applied. And when you screw those in, there's microspheres that actually interact together and lock that faster in place. Uh, we also have, of course, um, things of Loctite and Vibratite that help keep a bolted joint together as well. And those are applied at the time of assembly. One of the other considerations is the head style and drive. So I talked earlier about torque and I'm um, sure many of you when you've put together some different products here at the home or on your car, uh, have stripped out a, a drive. And if you need a um, torque to be applied to a fastener, you wanna make sure that that drive is going to be able to handle that amount of torque without camming out or stripping out of the drive itself. So there are many different types of um, tamper proof or tamper resistant drives that are available. Many people are are familiar with a tamper-proof Torx is one of the most common, but we also have a manufacturer that will provide you with a one-of-a-kind tamper-resistant drive that no one else will have, and they provide the, uh, I would say, sockets or drives to go with that for you to assemble your product and disassemble it, but not too many people know about the different drives that no one else will have out there. They're becoming very common. But this is very important consideration when you're putting together your design for your application. Uh, the different head styles, very important as well. Um, if you want someone to be able to access this at home, you want to provide them with a, a common drive that will, uh, or a head style, um, that they'll be able to access and to uh, take apart the bolted joint. So are they going to need a, a hex head? Are they going to need a socket drive? or Phillips drive, um, taking these into consideration and the profile of that head is very important for your design and let us help you with that. And here we have some of the do's and don'ts for head styles and drive styles. So please consider the most common drive uh, for your assemblies and this will keep the costs down. If there's not a high torque that you need on that assembly, uh, having a slotted drive or a Phillips drive is very common and keeps the cost rather low. If you have a product that 
do not want anyone to be able to take apart or to access into an electrical panel. Use a tamper proof or tamper resistant drive that will keep that from happening. Uh, lower profile heads. Uh, there's a couple different ones that we talk about, and that is the countersunk or a undercut countersunk. The undercut is great for thin materials, for sheet metals. Uh, that way you won't have a rather large head sticking up off of the profile itself. Uh, choose a drive that will uh, provide adequate torque. So if I have a high torque fastener that I want to put in, I'm not going to be using a slotted drive for that. I want to use a socket drive or a Torx drive that will provide the adequate torque for that application. Some of the don'ts, don't use the easily stripped out drive, your slotted drive, your Phillips drive, as I mentioned before. Um, don't choose a drive just based on the price. You want to make sure that it will provide that um, torque that we want to um, tighten up the fastener with. Um, we don't want to uh, have a drive that costs as much. So uh, don't choose a special special drive if, if uh, cost is one of, going to be one of the driving factors in your assembly. And uh, don't choose a standard countersunk and thin material. That undercut, as I mentioned, is a, a better way to go about it. We can help you with that and provide all the specifications on these drives and also the head styles. So one thing I do want to mention is we do have a poll that's going on as well, and uh, we appreciate your participation in that. And at the end, we're going to have a question and answer opportunity as well. So please stay tuned for the end of the uh, webinar, and we'll be able to uh, help you with that if you have any special questions you would like answered. Um, so here's one about domestic fasteners. Are they superior from overseas fasteners? So there's a a lot of different manufacturers out there, different countries. Um, when we look at the higher quality, we're looking at domestic manufacturers. You're going to have a reliable product that's made here in the United States. DFARS, DFARS is a um, where, where the material is made. So not where the faster necessarily, but fasteners are made from materials that are smelted here in the United States. So that is a DFAR compliant. It's a, a compliance that makes sure that you're using United States product. Um, chemically consistent appearance, a cosmetically consistent appearance. So you wanna make sure that that fastener looks the same every time. And we have different varieties of platings and colors that we have here in the United States. And if we wanna go ahead and have something plated, we're not going to send it overseas for that to be done. There's plenty of um, domestic plating companies here that are certified that very good job with our uh, applications, making sure that the thicknesses and the colors are correct. Uh, performance, we're looking at repetitive test results. We'll make sure that that fastener from a domestic manufacturer is going to be um, as strong as it should be and not over uh, hardened or not tempered release, uh, excuse me, so that you don't want to uh, have a part that's too brittle going to have a consistent drive qual uh, quality. So you want to make sure that that um, socket head cap screw is going to have a good uh, hex internal hex drive to it instead of that being camming out. We have some pictures later on that will talk about that. Um, you'll have reliable tensile and shear strengths, uh, consistent thread profiles as well. Um, we've had products that come in um, from overseas that uh, missing threads, and we have some pictures of that as well. Um, looking at your supply chain, your shorter lead times. Uh, when that uh, boat is coming in from overseas, you're looking at four to six weeks. If there's bad weather, they may have to avoid that. That's going to uh, cause a longer lead time or any issues at the dock, at the Longshoreman's dock. Looking at uh, different strikes that might be happening that will keep that product from actually coming into the port. Optimize your production and warehouse space so you don't have to have 12 pallets coming into you at one time. So using a, a local manufacturer, uh, we also we stock a lot of products here at Olander. We can provide you with this uh, product out of our inventory. Parts stock and customs. 
stuck in customs. That's what I was talking about before. You know, with that uh, boat coming in, it uh, couldn't get stuck in customs and you're not going to get your product. So using a domestic manufacturer, we feel is a much better choice. Certifications, your, your labs that you have here in the United States, um, make sure that we have compliance to your engineering specifications, test, re well, test reports, and lot traceability. So we'll make sure that this product, when we tell you it's going to be a grade eight bolt, it will be a grade eight bolt, and we have all of the certifications to go along with that. Talked about some of the fasteners that we get in. Um, these parts were imported. Um, we have the socket head cap screw here, uh, a button socket head cap in the center picture. And on the right side, you're looking at a well-formed head, a well-formed drive as well. And on the left side of that, you'll see a, a not a very pronounced drive and that can cause the head to strip out um, or the drive to strip out when you're trying to tighten down the fastener. So you're looking at an imported product versus a domestic product. We want to make sure that we provide you with the consistent quality. On the right side, it, it looks like you have a rivet and a uh, machine screw. Well, actually, these were both supposed to be machine screws, and neither one of them are perfect. Uh, the one, of course, lacks any threads at all. And the second part on the right, actually, it was caught in the roll thread product, uh, roll thread portion of, of threading it. So as it was supposed to roll across these thread dies, it actually was caught and it just caused a flat side on that one screw there. So using a higher quality domestic manufacturer, we can provide you with a much greater quality and consistency for all of your parts. Thanks, John. And so when you want to ensure the inventory you need is available when you need it, you may want to consider a vendor managed inventory program. So this goes along with supply chain. So there's a variety of ways we can support you. Um, looking at the slide pictured on the left is John and he's in the fabrication department of a customer of ours who manufactures electric vehicles. They wanted quick and easy access to the parts. So the pigeonhole system works great for them. And also pictured in the slide, you'll see some traditional plastic bins and our barcode scanning system. And this is just a small example of the ways that we can support you with the VMI program. There's also weighted bin systems and vending machines. We'll customize the program to meet your needs. So some of the benefits um, received when having a VMI are reduced cost through vendor consolidation, leveraging price based on annual usage, also reduced freight expenses um, through inventory planning and consolidated shipments, increased productivity by making product available and easy accessible. So um, not only at your facility, but on the production floor, and reduce and eliminate stockouts. We stock your inventory needs, so you don't have to. Ultimately, we strive to deliver value that goes well beyond the piece price, helping your business not only spend less, but do more what you do best. Back to you, John. Well stated, Ann. Um, so certifications, and uh, we wanna make sure that you understand what we say we're going to do is, is what we do. And our Washington facility is ISO 9001-2015 certified. We have plans for our other two locations that are in the works for us to become ISO certified as well. Uh, your KPIs, your key performance indicators, this shows the results that we're getting uh, from our targets that we have, that we've set. And our targets, they're pretty high. We don't set them low just to so that we can meet our KPIs, but incoming quality. So inspection, are things getting caught when we receive them? We make sure that what we say we receive in is the correct product, is the correct quantity to make sure. And the goal that we have is 99.85, well, pretty high. And in June, we are at 99.92. That's uh, quite impressive from our Washington facility. And 
we can't wait for the other two locations to come on board with our certifications as well. Then the outgoing quality, are we sending you what you want, the correct quantity and the right faster and the quality within that part? So our goal is at 99.93%, again, a very lofty goal. And in June, we're at 99.97%. It's very impressive. My hat's off to our team up in Washington. So the next thing we want to talk about uh, is inserts and the proper use of inserts. So some of the most popular lines that we carry of inserts are helicoil, captive fastener, AVK, key locking inserts, and also dodge. Uh, each one of these is a separate application for uh, different products that you may have. A uh, helicoil, most people know as a spark plug replacement wire when someone strips out a spark plug in your engine. Um, it provides very high strength. So if you have an aluminum application, you're putting in a stainless steel, a titanium and Inconel and Nitronic 60 thread inside there, you're having a much stronger bolted joint compared to an aluminum piece. It will also help lower your cost and provide a reliable um, bolted joint and fasteners uh, threads itself. Captain Fastener is uh, one of our manufacturers here in the United States that does press-in inserts. Uh, AVK is known as rivet nut. Uh, the first rivet nut was holding a de-icer onto the airplane. And AVK is a great manufacturer here in California that provides uh, rivet nuts, which put threads on the inside of tubes, inside of a, a channel and thin materials. Key locking inserts, uh, very high uh, use in aerospace. Uh, they have key locking uh, keys that keep the uh, faster in place and stops any anti-rotation, gives you superior strength. And then our dodge line is a thermoset and ultrasonically installed brass inserts for plastics. This will give you a strong thread in plastic materials. So here we'll talk about the helicoil. Um, in the picture to the left, um, it's a graphic of a dynamic load, and dynamic load is the amount of strength that each uh, thread is carrying. And in a bolted joint, when you actually put a bolt in place, even within tolerance, it actually uh, tilts a little bit to one side, and it rests on the flats of each thread, and the strength is only on about the first three threads. That's where the majority of the strength is. So if you want a, a stronger joint, use a helicoil insert, and that thread strength will be over the entire length of each thread. It does go down in strength, similar to the other one, but it's carried at a higher percentage of strength through each thread. So the way they're installed here is you see a simple uh, mandrel that's installed with a tap, and it has a tang break off um, of the insert once you've installed that product. Sorry about that, John. Here you go. No problem, man. We're good. Um, next thing is captive faster. So what's new with captive? They are now have a tape and reel system where they, you can uh, have the fasteners on a reel and uh, makes it much easier uh, for alignment of the product and automation to take place. So uh, CRM is a captive reel mount, reel mount acronym uh, for their nuts and spacers. So the um, you're putting in and pressing in a uh, nut into a piece of thin material. Uh, it's a way of holding it in place and providing threads in very thin material. So we're happy to discuss the captive fastener line with you. If you contact any of us at Olander, we'll help you out with that. Here are the AVK rivet nut. Um, you're seeing samples here of uh, bolts as well, because ABK also has a division that makes aerospace bolts in different materials. But the rivet nut, as I stated, will provide threads inside of a channel. You don't have to get a wrench to the inside. This is a, a permanent nut that is put in place in thin material, thick material. Um, they have sealing underneath the head by putting an eat PDM washer and melting it into place. They have studs as well. Um, it's ba basically a blind side fastener, and it'll provide you with uh, great threads that will be high strength 
inside of thin materials. These are the key locking inserts I spoke about, uh, very highly recommended for the aerospace industry. And this takes just a standard tap and uh, you, you thread the product in and then you drive those keys in with a, a small tool that you actually hit with a hammer and it drives these keys in and it distorts the threads of the uh, female threads of the product and uh, locks it into place. So they're very solid, uh, reliable. Um, there's no special tools except for the insertion tool, the drive tool that will keep those keys in place. Um, but again, you're getting a mechanical lock and very high resistance to rotation and loosening of the bolted joint. This is our brass uh, insert line for Dodge. That is a Stanley engineered fastening line. And you provide threads inside plastics. Uh, there's different ways that you can put them in. You can thermo set them in, uh, ultrasonically set them into plastics. Uh, we're very proud that every one of the seats at Levi Stadium here in Santa Clara, California, where the 49ers play, uh, has these Dodge inserts inside of them that we provided that to one of our local uh, injection molders. Thank you, John, so much. Um, I know we're a little over time here, but I, I wanted to um, bring your attention to our new website. We listen to customers in all areas of the manufacturing from purchasing, engineering, production, and brought to you through our new website, um, 3D CAD models for engineers to download, 2D spec sheets for download. Um, next slide here, we'll give you an example of what that's gonna look like as you go onto our website. So you see the, the CAD drawing, just drop into, um, uh, whatever methods you're using to design your product, as well as having the 2D drawings available for your bill of materials. I know that that's critical for the manufacturing industry. Also, what's great about the website, you could break down a part, right? You could enter into the search engine. You want a machine screw with a Phillips pan head and stainless steel and the size, and it'll just take you right to that part. Um, we cr um, have entered into our website cross references to McMaster car part numbers. So uh, some of the features were mimicking McMaster car because we were finding a lot of customers were using McMaster car at the design level and then having to find the actual manufacturer for it. So we're taking that out of the equation and allowing you to um, access the actual part number instead of a McMaster car number. Also on the website, you're gonna find technical bulletins, manufacturer catalogs. You can request quotes right on the website. Coming soon, we have chat features and um, already going on right now, we have blog posts. You'll find information about um, our VMI and kitting capabilities. So please come um, and take a look here. You have the phone number to contest, contact us, the 800 number, our website, www.olander.com. My contact information as well as John. Um, and we do thank you for being here with us and I hope this was beneficial. We will be following up with everyone um, with an email, but of course, feel free to reach out to us prior to that. Um, That's great, Ann. Not... You did a great job. Yeah. I'd like to uh, also mention that we soon we'll have e-commerce coming. So everybody wants to be able to buy on the web. We're going to have that shortly. So uh, we appreciate your support. And back to you, Ann. Um, thanks, John. And uh, Connor, our host, I'm not sure if he has received any kind of questions, but we are open to questions you may have for us at this time. So please put those in the chat section and we'll take a few moments uh, and see if any come through. Yeah, and again, you know, we appreciate your time and hope this was a benefit to you. Um, John and I are only a portion of the team that's here to help you. 
Um, we have a huge breadth of knowledge on the inside team as well. So uh, if you're one that likes to call in, um, we have a full staff there that can help you. So it, it, let's see. I see a question up here. Rodney Wilson said, uh, I'm not quite understanding this question. He, Something about- He said, uh, quote, tools to bat power for ribbon setting. Not sure what that was pertaining okay. to. Well, I think what he's talking about is setting uh, rivets with battery operated rivet tools. And we do have a selection of those that are available to you. So Rodney, we'll be happy to reach out to you. We do have everybody's email address and I've uh, I helped you out with that. We'll uh, supply you with the rivets and the riveting tools as well. So here's where you look at the um, strength of riveting tools that has really increased uh, over the years. I mean, I've been in this industry for 26 years and back then there were, weren't any rivet battery operated rivet tools or, or uh, screwdriver tools either. So we've uh, really uh, increased the amount of life and the amount of rivets that you can set. So we'll be happy to send you over some information, but uh, also just want to find out what size rivet, what material, what diameter are you looking at? If it's a structural rivet, that's a, a different battery operated tool compared to a standard blind rivet that won't require very much um, pulling force. And different tools have, uh, they're set for different size rivets. The, the less expensive rivet tools will only set aluminum in smaller diameters. Whereas if you have a structural rivet uh, and stainless steel, it's gonna take a lot of force to do that. Well, we can provide you with those tools as well. Okay. Um, well, Connor, if there's no other questions coming in, um, we'll sign off by you know, asking everyone to have a fabulous day and reach out to us if there's anything we can help you with. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ann. And please be safe. And please reach out to Olander. Let us help you with your product designs. Have a great day. Thank yeah. you, Ann. And thank have you, John. I uh, appreciate you both for coming out today. And uh, hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank, thank you. you Connor.